Hello and good evening, CSI 257. Students for the first eight week term of the fall 2014 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. Uh, this evening's video tutorial is going to be on Packet Tracer Activity 8.2.3.5. And this is, again, another fantastic uh, Packet Tracer activity where we really need to pull our skills together to troubleshoot the EIGRP uh, IPv4 network that we have in front of us here. So if you take a look over here, you can see we've got our addressing table. And just looking over the addressing table, I think I see at least one mistake in the addressing table. And so as we work our way through this activity, we'll see whether or not that's, um, that's actually correct, whether or not it is a mistake. And out here on the network diagram, I see something that jumps out right away as well. So as you can see, the R2 LAN is 172.31.20. This is 172.31.10, 172.31.30. However, here they show a slash 25. And on these two networks, they show two slash 24. So we're going to investigate that as well, because if you look over here, you can see that it shows the 172.31.30 as a slash 24 and I'm not sure if, if they're putting these in here as part of the troubleshooting or if the two things that I see are just mistakes the other um, possible mistake I see again we're gonna have to get into the activity is uh, it's the gig 0, zero the R2 land shows 172.31.20 and here it says 172.30.20 so I think it should be 3120 and not 3020. So if the mistakes are over here in the addressing table, I'm hard pressed to see that uh, that it would be designed as a troubleshooting activity, giving you false information here. But let's work our let's take a look around and see what we've got. So I'm actually going to go ahead and annotate things uh, directly onto the screen using. Uh, the writing tool. So again we've got a uh, little asterisk here. We're going to check this out to see if there's a mistake there and then it was the the other thing I was looking at. Ah right on the map here it shows a slash 25 here however when you look over here on R3 it shows it as a slash 24. Right so we'll check that out. We'll, we'll come back to that here in a second. Okay so let's go ahead let's pull up router 1 let's get started let's poke around and see what we see so we've got to actually find the connectivity you'll notice we don't have any red everything's green right so we're gonna to have to do some investigation so on router one if I do if I go from user exec to privilege exec and let's do a show IP route for starters all right so we're troubleshooting EIGRP here and so the first thing that you notice is there are no EIGRP routes so that could be problematic and it, it could be for any number of reasons so let's do show IP EIGRP neighbors and as you can see we have no neighbors right so let's pull up R2 here so something tells me that on router 1 there's definitely something's going on so we look at the neighbors, we look at the routing table, because again, we're troubleshooting EIGRP. So we'll go from user exec into privilege exec. Let's do a show IP route. So again, here, I don't see, I'm not learning any routes via EIGRP. How about a show IP EIGRP neighbors? Okay, and so if we look back at router one's output, we notice right away that the routing process, so it's interesting, the way they say neighbors for process 11, right? But let's remember, with EIGRP, it's not a process ID. It's an autonomous system number, and those autonomous system numbers have to match between the routers in the autonomous system or else EIGRP adjacencies will not be formed. So let's see what router three says. Take a look here at router three make this a little larger so from user exec to privilege exec let's look at our routing table again not learning haven't learned any routes via EIGRP so let's do a um, show IP EIGRP neighbors 
And so this uh, router three is also using the autonomous system number one. So let's jump back to one. Let's fix that right now. So if I do a show run, and this is what I'm looking at here, I want to see how it's set up with the EIGRP autonomous system number 11. So I'm going to go ahead and say config T and no router EIGRP 11. And this is not going to be disruptive if this was a production network. Remember, we've got the wrong autonomous system number. It doesn't match the other two routers and we're not connected to anybody else. So really, this isn't hurting anything. Now we want to go ahead and type router EIGRP one. So we're going to create the autonomous system number one. Let's investigate here. Let's look at these network statements real quick. 172.31.10 slash 24. So that's correct. 31.42.24. That is correct. And 31.42.32. That is also correct. So this information here, passive interface gig 00, our network statements. So we're going to paste that stuff right back in here. And look at that right away. We paste that in, we've got the right autonomous system number in there, or the correct autonomous system number. So now if I do a do show IP EIGRP neighbors, now I have two neighbors. I've got router two and router three as my neighbors. If I do a do show IP route, you can see now that I'm actually learning, and it looks like from router two, I'm learning from router two my static route or I'm sorry, my default route, and my guess is, is that he is redistributing this as a static. So it's an external EIGRP route. The administrative distance is 170. And you can see right here that this is my way out of the network. So from this router, if I were to ping, let's give it a try right now, 64.100.1.10. And does this work? And it does, right? So I'm able to get out of the network, out to the internet, to the outside host. What if I were to, let's uh, type in, what if I were to trace route? So if I try to do a trace route to 64.100.1.10, let's see what path I'm taking. And this might also show me if there are some issues here. So my first hop from my router is to router two. From router two, I go out to the internet and then to the host. So I'm taking the shortest path, router two to the internet to the host. So that looks good. So that was one of the problems. So let's go ahead and let's make sure that we annotate that. So we saw that on uh, device R1, the identified problem was the EIGRP, and I apologize, I've got this EIGRP, I've got the font or the thickness of the lines as, as low as I can get it. So the proposed solution, so we'll say the AS was 11. Proposed solution would be to do EIGRP, EIGRP, autonomous system one to match the other guys. And we've resolved that, so we're looking good there. So we'll go ahead and leave that there and we'll jump back over here. All right, so that was an issue. Now I don't know if there's a problem on each of the three routers. Uh, to make up the three problems or if they may be spread apart. So let's go ahead and take a look now. Let's jump on to router number two and let's see what router number two sees. So if I do a show IP route, right? I'm learning some routes here. There's the static that's being advertised as my guess. If I do a do show run, or I'm sorry, show run, let's take a look. So there's the gig zero zero interface that goes out to my R2 LAN, there's my serial interface to router 3, to router 2, and those look good. And here's EIGRP, and we are, as, as you would expect, we are redistributing the static. And just taking a look at this, so we are doing no auto summary, and right off the bat, you can see R2 has three interfaces here where EIGRP could be used. And we've got the passive interface on gig zero, zero. However, we have a single network statement for the 172.31.20.
for the gig zero zero network and we have a single statement here for one slash thirty so right out of the gate it looks like we're missing the advertisement for the one seventy two thirty one forty dot two two eight slash thirty so we don't have a network statement for that so how could we test this right so there's no network statement there so if I go on to router three and let's see, can router 3 ping 64.100.1.10? He can. However, let's trace route to that same address, 64.101.10. And where does it take us? Because if router 2 doesn't have a network statement for this segment right here, it's not being learned through EIGRP. So when I trace from router 3, Drop this down just a skosh. There we go. So router three's first hop is going to be to 172.31.40.233, which is router one. So to get to this host, I'm going from three to one, from one to two, from two to the internet, and then to the host. And that is definitely suboptimal. So if I was on router three, if I type show IP route, you can see that I've got a default route. I'm learning that default route, but it's coming this way. It's coming from two to one over to three. And that's clearly not what we want. And so if we had started on router three and not looked at router two and had executed the ping and then the trace route, we would have seen we're not taking the optimal path. We would have also seen, if I do a show IP EIGRP neighbors, that we should only have one neighbor. And that's true. We only have a single neighbor, and that neighbor is router 1. So then let's go ahead and jump back to router 2, and let's resolve this. So we're going to go into global config, router EIGRP1, and we're going to add that network statement for 172.31.40.228, and it's a slash 30, so it's 0.0.0.3. .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and as you can see, as soon as we add that network statement in there, we have a new neighbor relationship. So do show IP EIGRP neighbors. We should now see two neighbors. And router three should also see two neighbors. And he does. So let's let's run those tests again. So if I do the trace route now out to that host, let's see which path I take. And as you can see, I now go from router three directly to router two to the internet to the outside host. And so we cut one hop off. Let me try to scroll back here. So whereas before when we couldn't go directly to router 2 we had four hops and it took 13 milliseconds to get out there. As you can see here we've now got three we now have three hops. So adding that network statement in here that we were missing for this segment has now resolved another issue. So let's come back over here to the table and we'll pull the pin up and we're going to say R. Uh oh. That is definitely not what I wanted. So let's go back here. Control C. Let's drop that down. And it should bring back. Oh. It should bring back my uh, packet tracer. Okay, there we go. All right. Certainly not what I had anticipated there. So let's pull the pin back up. And we're going to say R2 uh, identified the problem. It was missing. So we'll just say network statement or just network missing. And so proposed solution was add the network. And that's been resolved. All right. So let's now come back over here. So we fixed an issue on router 1. We fixed an issue on router 2. Let's take a look at router 3 here. And say control shift 6. So if I do a show run, let's see what we've got. Or actually show IP route. Let's see what we've got on the routing table. So we're learning that external route uh, for our, our default route, which is good. Um, show IP EIGRP neighbors is good. We've got nothing in the queue, so that's good. Everything should be in a passive state. Um, show IP EIGRP topology, right? So everything's passive, so that looks good. 
and let's do a show run. See if anything obvious hops out at us here. So we've got router EIGRP1, passive interface gig 00, that's correct. We've got all three network statements, that looks good, and aha. So this is saying to auto summarize. So if I come over to router 1 and do a show run, I'm almost positive that we are doing no auto summary. That's correct. And we would know that because we want to be able to manually summarize any of the routes. So we're going to go ahead and change that. So I'm going to say go from privilege exec to global config and into router EIGRP, whoops, EIGRP1. And I'm going to say no auto summary. And we've got a soft reconfig. My hope is, is that that's going to solve it there. And so that, yes, so the completion did move to 100. So I'm going to come back over here. And we had router 3 had an issue, and it was the auto summary. And the proposed solution was to do no auto. It is sure hard to write in here, auto summary. And we solved it. We've got 100 out of 100. And again, I'm almost 100% certain that this is, so let me make sure, yeah, this is a typo. That should be 31. And I'm almost 100% certain that this is a typo, that that's not there to try to throw you, that that's just simply wrong. So that should be 31. And this should be slash 24. And we could jump on to, we could actually take a look at, um, PC3 here. Let's see what PC3 is that configured as a slash 24 and it is. <laughs> I've got the lines in the way now. All right, so it is a slash 24. So that is correct. And that should be 31, not 30. All right, so this was a, a great activity, great uh, IPv4 EIGRP troubleshooting activity. And this concludes. Uh, this video tutorial for Packet Tracer Activity 8.2.3.5. All right, have a great evening, and I will see you this week.